Black Dog After Dark is recorded in a video store by people who have been drinking. We swear a lot, and there's spoilers. It's not safe for work, unless you work in a video store and have also been drinking. You'd yeah. Be tasered well, the, yeah. Shocking. After nine eleven, now you can't do anything like that. But before nine eleven, you could. You could. I ran through airports all the time. I smuggled a lizard back from <laughs> Mexico I, I on an airplane. I chased you once. You did. I chased you once. I was like, yeah. And you, you were know. naked. I had a knife. It was <laughs> really weird. Because I'd seen this film and I was paying homage to Terry Garb. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. Imagine where it goes from here. Fixes the cable. I wish I had a dollar for each time I took a chance. I want to live. This is what I want. I want to go out with a bunch of guys. I want erotic things to happen. Did you make love to that guy? Of course I did. Was it passionate? Yes, very. You don't have to say very. You know, you could just say yes, but no, you got to say very. It's neon and glitter. Let's run away from Las Vegas. Junkyards and paradise. To Bora Bora and other romantic places. Listen. Loneliness, laughter and tears. Music and fantasy. Broken dreams and happy endings. I love her! Francis Ford Coppola presents One from the Heart. Let's get the Hit levels all the going here. Stick. The doors are closed. The sun has gone down. <laughs> That we are at Black Dog Video. That makes this Black Dog After Dark. Yes. Nostalgia movie podcast. Uh, it's a hot night. Oh, it is. Here in July. I am uh, one of the four assembled together. The four horsemen. The four horsemen of Just the apocalypse. Like, uh, no. I, call, I call pestilence. <laughs> I am Dylan. <laughs> Cameron. I don't Ray know Fingers. the other ones. <laughs> uh, play. Decre- decrepitude. Is that one? <laughs> Elderliness, <laughs> old, old, old man, old, old Rece- player, receding old hairline. I think is one. Yeah, uh, Dylan. Uh, I'm Dylan. Yeah. I'm Alex. Alex. Oh, sorry, I cut you off there. Go again. I'm Alex. <laughs> did it again. That's all you still hit. said. Sorry, I won't do it again. I promise. I'm Alex. I, I, I knew you're gonna do again. that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's not funny. I'm sorry. I promise I won't. It's a bad bit. I'm Alex. I work at Black Dog Video on the Rio Theater. I'm Josie. I used to work here. And then I didn't work here, and now I work here again. And who is our fourth horseman? And I'm Darren Gay. I own this uh, decrepit establishment that we're uh, and hanging out in, talking about movies, drinking beer. What movie are we talking about? I believe it was Josie's pick this time. Uh, I picked One from the Heart. Directed by? Which is a horror film by Francis Ford Coppola. Or Francis Coppola, actually, as he goes by in this. So, this was a movie that yes. we all watched. I, yeah. I literally finished watching it, I think, 15 minutes before coming in here uh, because I had a very busy day and so I watched half of it in the morning and half of it 15 minutes ago I don't think that's a good way to watch that movie scars are fresh now I had never even heard of this movie really until it was recommended it was a big bomb in the day I'm not surprised a big controversial bomb Um, did you my uh, no I had never seen the film before I've wanted to for a really long time because I love Coppola's I uh, no, I had never seen it before. I first heard of this movie, and I think it was in the mid '90s or early '90s. There was a documentary called "Visions of Light" that came out about cinematography. Oh, right. excellent oh, yeah, documentary. Great documentary. It used to air on PBS a lot and stuff. And this film is discussed quite a bit. Yeah. Who's the? And I'm sorry. Storaro is exactly the, is, is the cinematographer, and um, I forget the guy's name who was a DP who should also get some. Oh, of it was course. A collaboration, right? right? But I forget his name. Of course, wasn't he? he's not as famous. No, yeah. but they are. Interv- but this film is discussed in that excellent documentary, Visions of Light, and I was always impressed with what I saw, like the brief clips. So I had always been curious to see it. I've taken it home from the shop before, but for whatever reason, it just didn't get watched in that week's pile or whatever. Yeah. So this was my first time. I had never seen it either. It's one of those ones I kept putting off, putting off. It's always intrigued me just because, you know, it was the movie he did after Apocalypse Now. Just to see, you know, which I loved. And just to see what would ha- what his next thing was going to be. But yeah, I kind of heard it was like a musical and sort of a fancy. It just really tickled my, my movie bone. So I didn't bother. Uh, I never, never watched it until I was forced to watch it uh, yesterday. Well, not forced to. Uh, it was recommended for yeah. the podcast. Nobody's forcing <laughs> Yeah, so it was okay. like a clockwork one. I, kind of I, I think I know how most people feel about the movie. But I'm probably the only, I guess I am definitely the only person, maybe in a several block radius, <laughs> who Let's go take a poll. saw this film when it came out. 
Wow. In the theater. What is in the like, theater. What year is this movie? 82, 81, I think. 82. It, came was out, it, 82? it was made, made in 81, came out in 82. Okay. Yeah. 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 Came out in 82. Um, it was delayed. 1982. And the reason I went and saw it was because it was famous for being over budget and breaking his studio like before it even came out, really. It was a foregone conclusion it was going to be a bomb. Hmm. But so is Titanic. <laughs> Bless you. Every time yeah. I say the T word, he sneezes. Oh. Um, <laughs> that, no, but, but that Titanic Forrest ended Gump. up making money. He farts money. whenever I say Forrest Gump. Um, or barfs. Whereas this movie did not. This movie, like, killed Zotrope Studio. There was no Zotrope Studio after this movie. It, then it's fitting that at the end of this movie, it says this is all shot on a Zotrope. Yeah. No, it's very fitting, actually. Yeah. yeah. But the and, then, and then the curtain fucking closes over it. Yeah. Like, that, fair. Hey, that's, that's all, that's, folks. That's almost, like, kind of, you know, prophetic. Mm-hmm. Right, and you got to remember, I think that you know the, he made this film after being in, living in the jungle for five years, doing blow with Dennis Hopper. Yeah, yeah. Right? He, I and, think and, he needed and, to scale it down a bit. Just take it easy, you know. You know just yeah. do something that well, doesn't require. And I think require, he didn't want to leave his room, that. kind of thing. Well, I think right. He had this studio, and he built like he could have filmed in Vegas. He could have filmed in Vegas. He had like the, one of the biggest films in the world ever. Yeah, you know. I, th- I think and, I think and, part of him filming outside for that long a time in, in yeah. the jungles in the Philippines and stuff because it was the torture. So there's monsoons yeah. and there was yeah, like exactly. lizards and there's yeah. like, you know, dinosaurs, all, all the stuff that could go wrong, went wrong. So I think he just wanted total control. The only lizard in this yeah. was Raul Julia. Agoraphobia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, well, should we get into it? Like, uh, well, usually we talk about the plot, but there isn't one. No, there's not much of a plot. So it's your typical, oh. it's your typical this, boy this, meets girl. Boy oh, loses girl, oh. kind of thing. They break up. They get back together. Two people, you, two people you hate I are in ha- a relationship. I didn't hate that. I like Terry Gar. Oh wait, yeah, I shouldn't say I hate. I, I Terry, can't, you see that I can't hate Terry Gar. Terry Terry Gar is immensely immensely wash, watchable. I love immensely? Terry Gar. Immensely, yeah. she's hugely watchable. <laughs> she's, I, I love her in everything. Mr. Mom. I never watched she's, Mr. Mom. She's great in Mr. Mom. Yeah, yeah. she's no, she's great in everything. After, it was, after, it was after a, hours, a little. Well, I was after Wasn't hours. Was she the friend in the Dustin Hoffman? What do you call it? In Tootsie. Tootsie. Tootsie yeah, she's hilarious. I, I was kind of thinking through this whole movie that it was like a prequel to After Hours for and ter- for Terry Gar. Like she, at, yeah, because they're similarly strange. Yeah. A little um, off kilter. She, she plays kind that. of the same character. You, you can know? make a case for that. I think yeah, that, that would. That, you, you be, maybe there's a double bill idea. She was a little more of a lunatic in, in um, After Hours. Much more hours. of a lunatic. Well, yeah. look what she Total went through, look what she went through in this movie, though. That's true. And there was all oh. these weird like montages and floating heads and stuff. Yeah. Like that's gonna like push you around the bench. She was naked a lot in this. I was, she was, was, right. su- I was I surprised, surprised that, how much she was that naked. That was uh, like a Francis Coppola move. Yeah. Yeah. The he whole like because like, you, you like an act like Terry Gar wasn't the biggest star in the world at that point. She was nobody. The gal who was the friend. Yeah. Right. And one of the things that charmed me about the movie back then and and now was seeing two actors who I'd never seen at the time and knew about even at 15, 16, uh, getting to be leads. Right. 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 And I'm I'm character actors. Two character actors. Yeah. Because I'd already seen lots of movies with both of them or TV shows. They've both been in TV. Right. And when I was a little kid, I just watched alone on TV one time, The Rose. Yes, the mm. Ben Midler rock and roll movie. And Frederick Forrest is incredible in that yeah. film. He's a limo He's driver who gets involved with her. And I even remember finding out years later, he was actually even, I think he may have been nominated for an Oscar, but a lot of critics for his bit part in The Rose, which was just before this right. film and just before, around the same time as Apocalypse. Day. Yeah, well, this is like his fifth movie he did with, mm. uh, with Coppola. I guess he was like one of his stable actors or whatever I you call so. it. I think so, yeah, yeah. But that's but, what I mean. Like, I remember him as, like, being incredible in secondary roles, yeah. like in this movie, The Rose, and I had seen Apocalypse now, yeah. obviously. I don't, I, honestly, I don't think he's really leading man material I in this, after watching this. Agreed. Well, yeah, I, I, he, not, was, he was kind of lost, and for me, he was kind of lost in the whole movie. He was, but I don't, that's the shame, is that um, it was leading opportunities for both of them, but they were basically really not given much or anything they're pretty pretty thin roles like uh there's not not a lot of like like it's a beautiful looking movie and when i when i first put it on it's funny i first put it on has this really cool opening credit sequence with like like the the dunes and the sands like uh casinos but there's all the sand and stuff and there's like it's like there's like naked women's bodies made of Mm -hmm. sand and stuff and i said oh that's pretty trippy so i turn it off i went smoke some weed (laughs) and i came back and started watching it again and it's like, wow, this would be great on Blu-ray. It really needs a nice Blu-ray treatment. I, I thought you were about I, to say this would be great on blow. No, on yeah, yeah, this would be great on acid or, yeah. or fentanyl. I wish I had my, <laughs> some fentanyl. 
But yeah, I wish I had some chloroform. <laughs> uh, it's interesting is that is that the, the thing that the things that you guys don't like about it are the things I find charming. Yeah. Um, and it's not you know like you said it's a thin script. The dialogue is pretty thin for the most part. Yeah. But I feel like I feel like all the actors were up up their game in this. I felt that they were all really good. I really liked the little bit players. I thought Harry Dean Stanton. Nast- Nastasia Kinski was great in a goofy role. Mm-hmm. She was where great she until she was playing she... a very dorky character. She was not meant to be like she, in his eyes. She was this you cool, know, cool thing. But uh, like the exotic. actual human, very, she's human very scenes exotic. that they had with her, she was totally dorky and goofy. I don't know. I've, and, I've... She, I liked her except for when she was singing in that one bit where she sings. That was her, a, that's the weirdest song in the thing. It is. She's, 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 she's the only actor that sings in the movie as well. Everyone mm-hmm. else, all the other, all the other well, music. Well, Raul Juliet does, but not that well. No, oh, he's and, a little neither, small little bit neither there. does Frederick Forrest at the end. Well, okay, so oh, it starts yeah. out. Nobody can really sing in this movie. So, so, so no, Frederick no. Terry Gar didn't even try. No. So the basic, <laughs> the basic story is Frederick Forrest and Terry Gar are a, a, a couple. Yes, uh, and, and I actually, I, found, I found them to be a very believable couple. Yeah, uh, they having this uh, the kind of bullshit romance slash like an argument just happens like that. That's what yeah, I, yeah, I think uh, that's, which I like because that's how it happens. It's set on Does July third of whatever year, and it's the eve of their fifth anniversary. Yeah, because they met on and, July the fourth. And he presents her with a, well, she presents him with tickets for a vacation. Surprise to Bora Bora. I got it. He I'm, surprises her with by presenting the deed. To a house. I have a question. Does, is Bora Bora a real place, or is, yes. it, a, is it a movie yeah, place? It's, it's, it's everyone it's in the um, movies. It's where Oompa Loompas come from. Every, everybody it's also in the I movies would, goes to Bora Bora. And it's everybody also Bora Bora. what I would well, title my Tuesday. review of this movie: Bora Bora. But we'll <laughs> get onto that. Later. Yeah, I, I, so, I, somehow I don't think it's going to be a big surprise. Be surprised bad. at the end of the podcast when we well, reveal. I don't know. I, I think you're giving your you're already showing your. I've hand. already yeah. I've, <laughs> I've, I've, oh, your cards are mine. That, your and, cards and, are and that you guys haven't swayed me. In fact, maybe made me like it more. I look. I I hear We're what you're saying. We're only five minutes in. Okay, so it starts <laughs> out, and they're a couple, and they get into the most bullshit argument. But yeah. that's like all couple arguments are generally bullshit. At least yeah. early in early days, even though they've been together for like four or five years. Uh, I don't know why they're mad at each other. You spend money buying a house. Oh no! You spent money getting us tickets to Bora Bora. Oh no! And then uh, it just came out of nowhere. There, it came out of fucking nowhere. Yeah. And and then the lighting is weird well, because because she's simmering. lit and he's he's all red. Mm-hmm. And I love the lighting in this movie. It, it really reminded me of Natural Born Killers. Um, I, I like fake looking lighting. I'm a huge fan of it. In fact, the only Francis Ford Coppola movie I can say that I genuinely love is Bram Stoker's Dracula. It's the only movie that I've watched numerous times. That's a I pretty know, cool film. It's. Unpopular. I haven't seen a long time. I haven't seen a long time. But I really liked it when it came out. It's, it's, it's the only movie of Coppola's where I don't think he's just unbelievably. F- I've always said the reason I don't like Apocalypse Now or uh, the Godfather series is it's like staring at Francis Ford Coppola's testicles. It's all I can ever. Fu- what really? What? It's so sure fucking masculine that. and like I just. It's not, I'm not, you're not literally, I mean figuratively scary. Oh, not literally, I okay. Fr- I just find it so goddamn <laughs> male, and women never have anything to do or say in these fucking movies. And actually, I like this movie, because Terry Gar actually has some she's, lines. She's the lead character. She's yes. the main character. And so, like, I... Well, I, she had some agency until the very end. Well, then she's just lit, yeah. Yeah, I know. Oh, you're such an asshole, but I love you anyway. Eh. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I, the, my one caveat of the film, like, I really enjoyed it, and I enjoy it. On a level of what it's trying to do, which is trying to be a 1930s movie, which you can't do except if you're in the 1930s, yeah. mm-hmm. right? People try and do these things every once in a while. Neil Jordan tried to do it with that that comedy with uh, Peter O'Toole and the bed. And what was what? that? Was that High Spirits? Oh, fuck! I don't even remember. Yeah. That. Oh, yeah. I was trying I've to. Never was seen trying, that. Oh, like seriously, Neil like, Jordan, really? Yeah. Oh. He tried to do a screwball comedy from the 30s. But it was the late '80s, and everybody was on coke, and nobody right, yeah, it was funny. Yeah. Um, what about like? And um, and, and, and I, I it bombed in a very similar way to this, except because nobody's it ever heard cost, of it. It cost like a you know uh, like a ticket to the movies yeah. back then. Right. Right. You know, Not whatever this expen- one cost, like twenty five million dollars. This cost there. a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. And and I think that you know the look of it, like what you were saying about Blu-ray, to me. The movie is like it's an art piece. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. not. It's not like a romantic comedy. Because it's not that funny. It's not funny at all. At, right? Not even remotely. The music is Tom Waits, for fuck's sake. Yeah, okay, some of, it was, right? some of the, it's good, and some of it's got oh. that, that saxophone from the 80s, which is yeah. just, just, just grating on my brain. I, I feel like that 
Hollywood inserted into every movie in the 80s. Yeah. Like, like, was, by the you, way, no. It's though. a great film, but there's no saxophone. It's no saxophone. The completely, not just Tom Waits, but the completely insane pairing of Tom Waits and Crystal, Crystal Gale. Gale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, like, I, I, I actually like the music. The music was my favorite thing The music in this is movie. good. There's, in there's, fact, there's I was really excited yeah. when this movie started because I was like, even before you hear Tom Waits' voice, I was like, well, this this has a Tom. This kind of reminds me of Frank's Wild Years, yeah. or you know, or, or Heart Attack. You hear his voice, right? You're it's right like, up. oh my god, Tom Waits. Like, yeah. this is. I think I'm gonna like this, and then nothing. Then the, then the movie there's starts. No, well, there's no story, and that's it. What and, and Joseph, because, you make a good point. Yeah, there's not really supposed say, to be a story. You can kind no. of say Tom Waits for no one. Oh, for no man. Oh. Or woman in this. Movie. I love oh, whatever. I, yeah, you know. Tom, but you know what? Sorry, I, is, I didn't mean to shit all over your pun. The, the, the epiphany I Stop had about this movie pun. this time through, which I didn't like it quite as much this time through watching it as I did four or five months ago. I may not have been in as high. <laughs> so that that's part of it. Yeah. Um, but the other thing, the thing I realized watching this is something you're just sort of talking about with the no story and everything, is. What this needs is better Tom Waits songs, like mm-hmm. more of them and better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And to be a Broadway musical. It has the bare you mean, plot. You mean, you mean actually on Broadway? Actually not, on not, Broadway so, so, making $800 billion. But so, yeah, yeah. I, I, so actually not a movie. No. But a play. Like and a and that's musical. what it is. Yeah. Right? Like all these montages and stuff, that's the kind of shit they do now in these big, you know, you pay $300 You're to right. see Joseph in the Technicolor Jean Coat or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That This Jean film, jacket. the look of it, it's got all these, like, you know, they built these scale sets of Las Vegas. Yeah. And they built they actual built a, size sets. They built a fucking airport. They built an airport. <laughs> they built they built a, a neon graveyard. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. what was that? That tow truck, the guy's a tow truck driver? I think so. And he so. works in a that neon was, graveyard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, big cool place and to work. And you can, where you can walk on the wires. Right, yeah, without fear of electrocution without fear of stuff. Electrocution. That's a good band, too. Check them out. Neon graveyard. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, like, it's totally, like, the, the it's, you know, and it was before... The only musical like that at that time when this came out was Cats. The only big musical. You mean like 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 Cat like a broad, like, like Broadway. a big Broadway right. musical show like modern style oh. one. Right. Yeah, yeah. You have all those crazy sets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Julie Taymor directs it. Yeah. Right. I, I agree. This movie needed Get more. Get Tom cats. Waits. Dust off Tom Waits. Make him write some nah, more songs. He can't dust off. He's made of dust. You'd kill him <laughs> if you did that. Or it would gently handle Tom Waits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In a and then in a, a vacuum. Or, or or you know whatever, get in a cave instead. Or, Either way, make it like you know this. It's a kind of it, it's a, it's kind of a morbid romance. Neither of these people are that nice. Yeah. Right. But I found them more real because of that. Because most who people wants are dicks. Yeah, yeah. Like, we're all dicks, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, at least I am. Like it, it just it. I felt like there was a set piece required. Like yeah, and I because there's that, a bit when they start dancing in the literally yeah. dancing in the streets. That was I, my that was the only part of the movie I liked. That's my favorite part of the movie. I mean, that was my favorite part of the movie. But more of yeah. that would have been great. Yeah. I was. I, I think so, and that's why it needs to be a musical. Yeah, one hundred percent. But well, in, no. instead, you get this it's weird. Not really a musical. This weird walkthrough is the only way I can describe this movie. Is is it's a walkthrough the. Because they break up. Yeah. She gets. She's like, "That's fucking it," and they get in this big fight. Well, they, when, and when, she drives away. And she, <laughs> it's a, sorry. It's funny. One of the things when they're arguing, he argues that you don't shave your legs anymore. I know. They used to be appetizing. Now they're not appetizing. It's like, yeah, you're not doing your job as a woman. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah. No, and you've been living it for five years, for Christ's sake. I mean, come on. <laughs> what were you expecting? Well, she's sorry like, she's like, that. you're mean and abusive, it's and he's like, blonde. you you got hairy legs. <laughs> <laughs> it's like his big he's, comeback. His big comeback. Well, we can't all be professional comedians, you know. But they're not defined. They, like they, at no point were they ever defined. I never knew yeah. what she wanted. I, 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 yeah. I, I realized. Oh, that must be her character. Is even she doesn't know what she wants. Well, she kind of her. her was sort and of same it was, with him. It was sort of like on, on one level, it was she wanted to get out of what she was doing. You know, she worked at a travel agency, but had never been anywhere. She's a so, window dresser. Yeah. Yeah, as a travel yeah. Agent. yeah. Yeah. She's not even a travel agent. No, right? she's, she's the she's yeah. the window dresser in the travel agent. I didn't realize travel agencies had windows. <laughs> it's Vegas, baby. It's Vegas. You <laughs> really? Just, everything's on display. Yeah. All you can eat buffet. Yeah. I'm not no, sure. Like, like, yeah. 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 Never seen that. The restaurant scene was one of my favorite scenes. The guy with the restaurant scene where Ralph Julia quits his job. Yeah. Which was bizarre. It was a that was that was my favorite scene because it was so out of nowhere. But they bring in this this what's his name the the he's a 
He's in a million TV yeah, shows. The yeah. guy who played the owner of the restaurant. Yeah, oh, that I, guy. I can't remember his he's, name either. But he's yeah. like, he's I remember fellas, him right? from like every sitcom. But the guy who yeah. runs the restaurant? Yeah. 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 yeah he's, he's also in a really great film, a favorite of Darren's called Teachers. Oh, why is that a favorite he's of in, mine? Crispin <laughs> Glover bites his hand. Ah. Wait a minute. Hold on. Was, was, wasn't, did he play the restaurant owner in Goodfellas or not? No. Oh, no. Maybe thought, he did. I thought I it was know. the same guy. That could be. Could that be could be like an homage to but did, did, you, did you notice who was sitting the table next to them? Was uh, Rebecca De Mornay. That's that right. Was, so it, was her, it was her first movie. She had well, a tiny did, little bit in it. Yeah, but, and at the end, in the end credits, um, Rebecca De Mornay was uh, an understudy to Terry Gar. So what is that? that movie. So so when it, cause I saw the I saw the credits and it said understudies like so uh, they so, were the people who were in case Terry Gar got hit yeah, electrocuted if, if, or something. If Terry Gar did too much blow with Francis Ford Coppola and had to go to the hospital. Right, they bring yeah, him yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and a voice goes. The the role of Franny is now being played by <laughs> Rebecca De Mornay. In a movie, did he yeah. need or don't you just wait? Do you just wait? What? Just reshoot the whole thing? Wait a minute. So Terry Gar had like been run over by a bus or something, or got sick. Uh huh. They, well, would, they e- wouldn't. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. Either one production. Was, they would just bring in Rebecca. Like, like, yeah. all, like all his movies, it was a long sort of production. And they, 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 had they three months of I rehearsals. They, yeah, they had three months of rehearsals. So you need understudies to come in when you're sick of it and you don't want to do it anymore. So you, you have the understudy does it for a few days. Yeah, please. Um, why do we you know. pretend like? Why do we do that silently? I don't know. Because like, we, I, I, I just sort of said, please. Well, we don't. We don't want to interrupt the flow of the conversation. As a conversation grinds but a yeah, I remember reading about that that it was um, there was something about that because of the, the how much rehearsals they did. Yeah, right. Well, so, I, 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 so you know, like if 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 they if they still like and who was the the Harry Dean Stanton in his perm? Okay, yeah. Let's oh, get I love yes. Harry Dean wait, Stanton. Wait, wait, wait. I love that was Harry something Stanton. I wanted to talk about. We, yeah, yeah. So let's lead into that. So yeah. they get into an argument, and she's like, "That's it. It's over." She gets in the car. She's going to drive away, and and, and uh, he's like, "She says I boned." Your best friend. Uh, she, she 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 made out with him at she New Year's him, Eve. At New Year's Eve. She made yeah, but he had he had his hand up her shirt. Yeah, yeah. Like, it yeah. was more than a peck on the cheek. But he yes. but she uh, he and also then, admitted he slept with somebody. And he boned the blonde. Did, 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 whoever he, that was. Did he like that evening? His name's yes. Mo, not Franny. Whatever, Mo. Mo, Mo and Mo. Franny. Mo and Franny. Yeah. No, no, Franny and Hank. Is, Hank is Frederick Forrest Lee. Yeah. Okay. Mo, Mo is Harry Dean Stanton. Harry Dean Stanton is Mo. I wonder if Mo's. Mullet on The Simpsons or his perm on The Simpsons is an homage. It's a hell of a... Uh, that's an, a an, an homage. Color, <laughs> that's the homage. most extreme I've ever seen Harry Dean Stanton look. It's funny because... And he, he was a young 55. character name, <laughs> but, well, Has he ever been young? <laughs> well, sorry, I have written here, he, uh, he's always old. And he's his best friend. He's got at least 25, 30 years on Freddie Yeah, Forrest. yeah, well, it's Freddie Forrest, like <laughs> yeah. 35 at the old. And then, and so, and then Terry yeah. Garr was making out with Harry Dean Stanton, uh, supposedly. Yeah. At a party? At a party? I don't know. Harry Harry Dean Stanton, I swear he was in like The Great Dictator. (laughs) He played like Mussolini's grandfather. Holy shit, this guy's so old. He was Chaplin's understudy. I was surprised when he died because I didn't think it was... like It's the most... It's like... Like he's still alive? Yeah. Harry Dean Stanton? No, no, no. no. Oh, yeah, That's yeah. what you said when and he died. And John Hurt. Both of them look so haggard, like a pair yeah. of baseball gloves. Yeah, well, didn't exactly. Didn't John Hurt die, though? Like, John, as did Harry Dean Stanton. They look like uh, Francis Ford Coppola's testicles. Yeah, they're wrinkly. I know he's a genius. Don't you? You guys all must have a fucking director that you can recognize as being a genius and not enjoy watching their movies at all. Michael Bay. <laughs> I thought you were on my side. Anyway, that's all I need. But yeah, I'm trying to think of one because I want to have one of someone like actually, that. Actually, actually, yeah, um, I, I want to have I want to yeah. have a director like that. But the people I don't like, I don't consider them to be geniuses because their films are idiotic. Like, 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 um, like for, for, for me, like I don't like Nicholas Rogue films. I find them really, really hard to watch. I, I am kind of on, pre- on base pre- with you pre- for the most part. With, I, I find that Nicholas Rogue has a couple of films I love. And the rest of them, I have a hard time watching. Yeah. What about Ken Russell? That's a good example. I like I like a couple of Ken Russells, but overall, I'm not a huge fan of his no, films. I, I'd like to maybe see a few more, but I, you know, I, I there's hey, a few that I really like. Come see Altered States. I was gonna say I like, I like yeah, Altered States. Check your local listings. Yeah, Altered States is great, and The Devils is great. And apart from that, I'm not sure what I would like of his. Women in Love is fantastic. I've never seen Women in Love is good. That's a That's great a really film. Glenda Jackson. She's she retired from acting. I don't know exactly what point. Some point in the age, she's a politician now. Like a, oh yeah, she's British going to MP. play Lear on on Broadway though. She's coming back. To Is she Lear. coming back? She's I, coming back to play Lear. She was so great in that movie, the um, the Women in Love. She's she's double Oscar winner too. 
No. Women in love and touch of class. Anyway, she, she would have. I don't know why I'm just, talking about. She would have classed that one from the heart. <laughs> well, okay. It's because of the tattoo. No, one from the heart. All right. So, where were we? Oh, we're okay. So, so then you Hank, Hank goes to Moe's house. Moe's house. Ho- Mo played by the erratically uh, haired. Harry Dean Harry Stanton. Dean. Harry, Dean. Harry Dean. Yeah, yeah. That, he's got a great, great, crazy outfit on. He's got the weirdest, weirdest outfits in the whole movie. Yeah, I, I watched the extras, and even when he's being interviewed in the extras, he's got the weirdest outfits on. He had this weird, like, like a uh, crocheted, like knitted vest <laughs> that is like purple and orange, and like it's he's the awesome. I I can I can't get enough of that guy. That's yeah, he was for me. He was my favorite thing in the movie. Was... The, uh, Raul Julia was my favorite thing in the movie. Raul Julia was Raul great Julia as well. Was really good in it. Yeah, okay. yeah, and this movie is full of really. Great actors, and and the act, they were all giving great performances. It's just I, I'm not sure in service to what. Yeah. Well, so, and so it, they say they have an argument. At it's not a con- it, well. It's not a conventional um, <clears throat> story movie as we've talked about, right? What what it is? I was watching it. This this is why this whole thing of it being a Broadway musical stuck in my brain this time around is because it's very dreamy. It's very dreamlike. They yep. go blend into the fantasy sequences, like which we'll get to as we're doing the plot or whatever. But it happens very soon on in here, mm-hmm. where all of a sudden it's in a fantasy sequence and you're almost thinking that they should be singing, but it's Crystal Gale and Tom Waits. Yeah. yeah. Or or one of those two alone or something, right? There, there's some a couple of where they, they each do a song or whatever. Well, that the... Uh... That's what made it kind of like a like a weird musical, non musical. Like yeah. nobody's actually it's, it's singing, like, but it's like a giant montage. But yeah, but, but the, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. The, the, the 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 music was propelling the story, and you're just seeing people. And we're with... and we're used to we're used to you know stories with cuts, right? There's no cuts here. There's almost no plot points. I no. had to double check. It's, it's a I, long montage. Because like. I, 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 at about I think the twenty minute mark, I was wondering if it was, is this a, has this all been one take. And then and then they no. remembered. Oh no, there was a like a weird. Yeah, but it's fairly seamless. That the yeah. cutting is pretty seamless. There's, there's lots not of a fluid lot of jarring. Work, yeah. There's a co- only a couple of shots that may be a little jarring. There's one dance thing where I think they just didn't get it right, and they do like this stuttered cut when oh, there's like when, there's, when, when, when he's turning him around on the on the yeah on he's the, the road the guy around yeah. on the road there, yeah. and it's it like I didn't even notice it the first couple of times. Like I didn't even notice it in the theater when I saw it in the theater. Right. Which I tell you, that's a film that I remembered when I saw it at 15 or 16. I had no idea what it was about or what it was. And I liked it. But I had no clue what happened. Mm-hmm. Why these people were even together. <laughs> didn't really like, care. I, I didn't care because yeah. it was like beautiful like a dream. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and I'd never seen color like that. I was 16. I'd seen... Star Wars and you know whatever sci-fi movies came into town, right? Beastmaster, ridiculous comedies, anything, <laughs> anything with the people from 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 SNL, right? You know, which are the, most of those films are not known for their gorgeous cinematography. No, Animal House, no, right? <laughs> Ugh, exactly. And this film, this film made me watch Apocalypse Now, which I truly loved and is one of my mm-hmm. favorite films. This movie made me think a lot while I was watching. It. Like the visuals are amazing. By the way, I just watched it at home, make it clear, because I want to make that clear, because this film has, yeah, I agree what Josie's saying, like this endless montage of, you know, emotion or whatever, or or just, you know, the color and all that stuff. But, I mean, definitely, I mean, maybe this would be, um, in fact, I know it would be completely different to watch it in a theater, for example. I haven't, I didn't see it in the theater. Program for the real. Because it's, maybe I will, but it's almost like a kind of, it's, it's like a gallery installation, in a way. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, uh, but that being said, I don't want to get too, you know, pretentious with all. Like, yeah, it's a whole visual uh, pretentious wanker. Yeah, I know, <laughs> exposed. But, but, um, yeah, I don't know. There was still some. Yeah, I just wish more had happened. I can understand that though. Like, you're dropped into almost a sensory experience and stuff like that. But it reminded me a lot of the Walter Hill movie Streets of Fire where yeah. funny, I was... the premise is, is like okay this, yeah. you know and then all the amazing visuals are there but there's not a lot of that's one I would like to revisit yeah, I, haven't, the... I haven't watched that in a long long time I, re- I never I never liked it when I saw it I saw it I've seen it about five times and I've never liked it either time Streets of Fire it. yeah by the way that was I your went in with a totally wrong impression by the way I had always heard about this being a musical I did expect like 
cigar and so so, so did I. Be singing, yeah, but, and I was I was not looking forward to that. But uh, well, I wouldn't have minded. Well, but, but, yeah. but when I saw Tom Waits' name come up on the songs, I'm like, oh, this is going to be all right. And for the most part, it was. But there's some parts that some songs that were just you know, please yeah, they, just they, end this song. Uh, yeah, but yeah, some of the songs. I'm so not tired Tom, of Tom, Tom watching your underwear <laughs> on the cold. Space. There were a couple <laughs> that were very. Uh, a couple of the songs were very um, expositional. Yes. Well, that, that's, well, that's, well, that's what he's, the whole he's movie like, was. I don't know if he's trying to rhyme it or something, but he's like, he's leaving you with a guy from South America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's about to get yeah, on a plane to Bora Bora. Uh, he's a part-time waiter, played by Ralph Julia. I'm sure. I'm sure. Like he's like, watching the movie, scoring it, and just yeah. just saying he's what he's saying, <laughs> and then plinking on the piano every now and then. Plink, plink, plink. And now yeah. some short guy's asking for a light, and you gave him the matches by mistake. <laughs> You'll never see him again. What are you gonna do? But the other songs, I mean, you can't can't get too thrilled about it because the songs are literally about being bored in the relationship that you're in yeah. and they're very effectively communicating that's that a, feeling. That, that's a tough topic to write a, you know, a musical score to. Well, I was, well, I was watching a little bit on the extras and they interviewed Tom Waits and he's saying he got stuck for writing some of the lyrics. So he just went to like, uh, some kids books. There's, oh, uh, there's wow. one that there's like little boy blue or something like that. And he, there's like a three or four lines from that uh, that he sort of incorporates into it. So it, uh, I, I I think maybe he had a tough time figuring out what to do as well for this. I think it's yeah. probably early music work for him. Yeah, like, like, like our, too, so. um, um, might have been movie work, right? Like like it's his first it's his, doing... first. it's his first score. It's his first score. Like he's he's uh he's had his music in movies before, but it's right. his first score that, that, was that he's written. Time, yeah. Did he ever score anything else? Well, oh, probably some Jim not, Jaramouche movies, I imagine. Yeah, well, believe it or not, he's actually in the first film ever directed by Sylvester Stallone, Paradise Alley. No, I, I thought that was, uh, oh, was it the Italian Stallion? No, it's, 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 no. <laughs> he didn't Stallone? Direct that. No, no, he Stallone didn't direct that. Didn't direct that. No, but he's he in a Stallone direction. film. Yeah. He, he sure know, did. He, uh -huh. he took direction, all right. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. Um, and also, he said a lot of his songs have been used in movies. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, Smoke uses one of his songs. So. I wonder if this is where the Francis Ford Coppola Tom Waits relationship began. Although, I guess he. I think it probably did. Because of. Ram Stoker's Dracula is the yeah. only other movie. Oh, right. He was, he was Renfield in that. Yeah. Yeah. Ate some bugs. See, the thing with Fran with um, Dracula that I love is, 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 is it's the similar lighting, huge, enormous sets. It's all practical effects, visuals. too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 With the rats and all that. But, all of it. But, like, but in. But you're following an interesting story, and you can you can forgive the bad accent. Yeah, it's, it's also a story that's been around for a long time. That's interesting to start. It's yeah. not like his own, you know, his own creation it's, kind of thing. It's not a couple break up. They go, they, they separate, they, and then they, they, they both bone someone else. And immediately, they get back immediately, like this less. It's less than like twelve hours later, yeah, and they both also, pick somebody it's also up. A movie that didn't <laughs> not do, even that. They didn't do as well as it didn't do as well as everybody had hoped. I but it, it didn't bomb as bad as say um, what Jack. Didn't? Well, no, I think oh. Jack did pretty well, oh. um, but uh, it didn't bomb as bad as this movie that we're talking about. With Dracula? From the heart. No. Dracula bomb? No, it didn't no, no, bomb, it was, but it didn't, it, it was, it was, it was expected a, to be like this big blockbuster. It was, it was a pretty good thing. Oh, but it did okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and it did at the time, the criticism when it came out was actually pretty heavy. It was, it was all about Canoe Reeves? Yeah. yeah. Nobody could get past that. Well, it's hard to get past. Yeah. Was, yeah. But like, I th I am a big fan of the Dracula also, and I totally get past that. Yeah. Like, you just use whatever, Arthur, you know? Harker's a boring character in the it's, book. It's, it's, like, it's like a wooden like, cigar store Indian. They're moving around in the movie. Harker's then... a boring, <laughs> Harker's a boring part of that book too. Yeah. Right. The book, the book Dracula, Harker is really boring. You want him to die. Like you don't really care. Right. In the book for Harker. He's right. not, he's nominally the hero, but not really. Ugh, and then Mina. God, yeah. who has the worst accent? Oh, gee. who? Is it, is it Winona Ryder Winona or is it Keanu yeah. Reeves? Who has the yeah. worst? Oh, what's I that? know where the boss bad sleeps. Yeah. <laughs> they were, they were, they were both. That was a bad accent battle. They were both terrible. <laughs> um, yeah. So the set pieces, I mean, what do you, so then she, she goes to, she meets, where, how does she meet Raul Julia? She's, she's dressing the window and he yeah, comes he, up to her and starts talking to her through yeah, the window. Through the and window then, he's talking And then her. he gives her a card saying, come watch me play. I'm going to be singing and playing play the piano. piano. He, he gives yeah. her a matchbook for the, the, yeah. the restaurant. Yeah. Which she promptly, out. promptly loses uh, later on. It's funny. Cause, and then, um, and then, uh, for, uh, not Mo, uh, Frankie. Yeah. He, uh, he meets Natasha Kinski and immediately, immediately hit it off and they, Hank. Yeah, then they they but meet. She's they meet making like, eyes at him, which I found totally 
ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, I found it ridiculous as well. But that uh, doesn't yeah, matter. So she's so a, stunning. Yeah, when, when the and he's not. He's, she's just, he's not well, really yeah. handsome. She, should, she shouldn't really be looking at either Harry Dean Stanton or him. Yeah. Like she should yeah. look at them and kind of go, "Oh my god, oh, oh, those guys!" <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Harry, well, yeah. according to they're, Dylan, just, they're staring at us. Like they're, they're two yeah. feet away from her, staring <laughs> yeah. at her. Like, can we get? Well, out and here? then and then he kind of stalks her as she's like having an argument with her, with with her boss or, like or whatever, and cor- and and he's over like standing right there, he's right there. <laughs> she should be staring at Francis Ford Coppola's balls. Yeah, this movie didn't feel like. Coppola's balls. That's that's that was my point. This is the one, <laughs> the, one of the like few enough. movies where it's just like I didn't feel like I was staring at Coppola's testicles. All right. <laughs> and there was the Rainmaker also. There's not a lot of testicles. There's not a lot. No. It's got not, Matt Damon. Very non testicular. Yeah. Wow. That's because it has Matt Damon. What about Jack? I've never seen Jack. Me neither. I'll never I, watch I feel really movie. good about that. Yeah. Yeah. Mentally challenged. I, really, I, Robin love, I love Francis yeah. Ford Coppola and I love Robin Williams and I yeah. don't want to see that. No, it'll sully your your your. <laughs> Memories of them for sure. Not that they're both dead, but what else was yeah. Nastasia Kinski? Yeah, I know she's in Cat People. Innocent Blood is the only one I can she, think of. Well, no, yeah. she's in several films in the Ace. She's Cat People. also in The Amazing Paris, Texas, also with Harry Dean. Right, Spence. that's right. Yeah, she's also in Cat People. Yeah, that the, the, the remake, not the and, end. And, yeah. um, which is awesome. Uh, um, Malcolm McDowell. The tenant. Right? Is she in the tenant? She plays the young woman that that. Um, Roman Polanski dresses as when he throws himself out the window twice. Spoilers! Oh. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean? Um, like she's, I actually haven't is seen she the, the woman under the bandages? Yeah. Because you it, never see her face. I know. But her... Oh, well, like, like, she was too young or something. I was going to say, she, I was gonna say like how old seven, is she? she was, yeah, she was only in 17. Tess, so they put it, perfect they put for it Polanski. She's in classic Tess. I mean, she's in Tess. Right. Natasha Kinski's had an awesome career. Yeah, but, no, I've always uh, been a fan. At that time, by that time, and she was age, one of the bigger stars was, in that film. She was the, like, it girl, shall right. we say. I hate yeah. that term. Yeah, but, it's like, true. in 1980, 81 or 82, when, when that came out, uh-huh. she was a pretty big star. Was she? Yeah. Cool. cool. She's also in another one called Exposed. That was really... Do you, do, 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 do you have to say it like that? Do you have to say it like that? You have to whisper it? Is she Klaus's thing. daughter, by the way? I think she is. I'm pretty sure she's Klaus's daughter. I was wondering about that. I meant yeah. to Google it. Pretty, it's, a, it's a pretty unique name, and I'm pretty yeah. sure that she's Klaus Kinski's daughter. I could be wrong. Yeah. Kinski, though, it's also your middle name, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I, I, tw- I, do, I like it so much as twice. It's Darren Kinski, Kinski gay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so uh, so they meet and then and then uh, I don't I don't I kind of I actually wrote down here I don't get this film at all I, I, totally I just I just stop like what the fuck is going on now and then and then the, and then the big dance scene happened which I really liked that was my favorite so you, scene. So you, you want to know what my take on it was because I enjoyed it. Yes, that was happening. I didn't say I didn't enjoy it. I didn't know what was going on. Well, that, I didn't and that's get it fair. Like yeah. when I saw it when I was when I was young, I didn't know what was going on either. Yeah. And uh, when I saw it in in February, a lot of this stuff, I was like, oh. What I like about that is, you know, what's the reaction a lot of people have when they have, like, you know, ridiculous argument breakup, right? And they go stay at their friend's place. They go out and they hook up with somebody. I've never done that. No? I, really? Well, no. <laughs> or they try to hook up with somebody. Right. I'm not saying I necessarily didn't say they try. were successful. <laughs> yes. No, you don't necessarily. And, uh, you know, you might not expect Frederick Forrest or that character to be that successful. Especially either. with Natasha Kinski. Right, yeah, you figure he doesn't have a chance. And then it's in this big fantasy sequence, and then she's like like an hour late or more. Right. He's supposed to meet her at 9 o'clock. Right. She sh- the the, Fremont he has Hotel. a fantasy sequence where she's not there yet. Yeah, yeah. Right? And then when she does show up, and she's got like a birdcage and all this stuff because somebody locked her in a bathroom and she quit her job oh, that's as right. a dancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all this stuff gets portray- gets out there, right? And so she's showing up, and she shows up after... Um, uh, Terry Gar's character Franny meets Raul Julia, yeah. improbably named Ray. <laughs> was it, he's from yeah. South America. Is, is There's this, a lot of Rays. From is, South is, America. is this is this before or after she runs into him at the restaurant where he's yeah. a waiter, which yeah. is one of the craziest scenes in the whole movie. Well, no, well, but like that's at like at midnight. That's yeah. supposed to be at midnight. She's right. meeting him, and he the other guy was meeting his at, friend at, at nine, nine o'clock, and they're sort of meeting parallel actually yeah. so she was super late and he hung out for like three hours three he's hours like, desperate. really wants a revenge sex and it's natasha hinsky and it's natasha hinsky yeah <laughs> revenge sex so he's like yes i'm gonna i want to do that and then she shows up and he helps her out and then they right. go to that weird place and she and she goes on a zip line and then um <laughs> yeah. And then they yeah there's a zip line or yeah. something and then they, bone like, in a, they bone in a car when, they when, bone when, in when, a car but, yeah. then, but when, when does the big dance number happen in the street then was that is that well, that's, they, they pass the two couples 
have have met and decided they want to like they're walk, running to... go somewhere with each other, right? And so they pass each. They they're at either end of the crowds, and the crowds are doing all their dance, and then they sort of the whole dance thing happens as they, they give each other a thumbs up or something. They, yeah, like that. they're all they're like <laughs> and and at this point watching the movie when like I didn't remember the ending from when I was young when I saw it in February I was like when you're oh, young well, that's in interesting because they're kind of giving each other permission there. Guess, this, they, yeah. they, they're kind of like they nod to each other the two women nod to each other and they know what the situation is huh. they're like he just broke up there's the ex because mm-hmm. he whispers in her ear something and so it's like probably no- who nodding. is that why were you making eyes at that lady right right and it's like well she's my ex we live together blah 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 we broke blah. up like two hours ago <laughs> two hours <laughs> yeah ago. what time is it now you know yeah. and uh so that's sort of like the whole sort of you know I was hoping that, you know, oh, well, something interesting is going to happen, but probably they'll get back together. Okay, It'll so be cheesy. is this, is she on her way to Raul Julia's restaurant? And I still don't know how she knew no, where it was. No, she's coming from the restaurant with him. Because oh. he, he got fired because he, he sat down. because he sat down. And I like that. I do like that scene a lot where he's just like, fuck it, I'm, I'm going to eat these people's food. And yeah, I love the whole thing where he's like, "No, no, it's mine now." I'm not sure yeah, why. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure why he did that though. Yeah, it's, it didn't it, make any sense why he did that. Because he it's, wanted to bone Terry Gar. Yeah, but he doesn't have to. He doesn't, he doesn't have to do that. Doesn't give himself fired. I think he does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, well, by the way, yeah. when the boss arrives and catches them misbehaving. He's so fed up with them. You can tell he's probably sick of the job they've been getting on each other. I thought he was pretty, he's sort of putting on a show, putting on airs for her. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think there's some of that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, there is and, that. and and he it, wouldn't have done it unless she was there. Yeah. But he would also wouldn't have done that in front of her unless he was totally sick of the job. It's true. So it's the perfect storm. I'm sure, I, I'm sure it's a thankless, gross that's a, job. That's a, yeah. that's a quit that later when he's a bartender in Bora Bora. Um. He will. Oh yes, that's the sequel. Two, that's the sequel. <laughs> two from the heart. <laughs> two or from one, the heart. One, one from the liver. Which is yeah. great. It gives it. We're, we're spoilering the ending right now, but <laughs> yeah. that's what that's what would that's happen. What, that's what we do here. No, yeah, no, he, yeah. That's the sequel. He moves and, to, and a much worse musical uh, Broadway musical. He, he moves to Bora Bora <laughs> and he, he changes his name to. Uh, uh, Adams, Adams. And, then, <laughs> and he gets all exotic. Yeah. Oh, Adams like Adams family. Is yeah, that what you're yeah, talking about? Yeah. Okay, I just pulled that out of your hat. Yeah. Um, no, I, I'm, I've been working on that one all day. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, there's a thing with horseradish in that scene, and it just they get oh, very, yeah. they, they all get very it? excited about horseradish. I almost rewound that to to figure out what the joke was or what the thing was about I, that. But they had horseradish. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute. So that's not a prop. That's like actual actual horseradish. They went out and got horseradish. Best like, use of horseradish in fiction, by the way. <laughs> An episode of Get Smart when oh Maxwell kills the tarantula on his leg with a jar of horseradish. What, he, he, hits he, with, he, that he, he hits you with the jar? No, he unscrews the cap of the jar and then squishes, like, puts it like the horseradish kills the and, dead and tarantula. Uh, that would, little, little that'd be fact, a big... Alex lives in a building that, that has the same amount of doors to go through as the secret. Get Smart. <laughs> why did the horse... Why did he just... It's a waste of good horseradish. He undoes it. I don't, you'd have to ask Mel Brooks. Why does he, do, why does he just? It. Why does he just flick the, the the spider off his leg? Yeah, so it's like why would you risk getting bitten by by it's attacking get it? It's Get Smart. Why are you questioning the logic? It's called, like, of get, get Smart. Get dumb. Okay, see, so now you said it's... the joy that killing the tarantula <laughs> with horseradish brought me, and you're questioning that. Da, da, da. <laughs> Okay, so what's the next part in the story? Then? Um, I don't it's know. It's not that long. No, they, then they, they they go off and they have their respective sex. Yeah, and then uh, and then Frederick, which Mar- we we tastefully don't see. Yeah, if the they, movie was made now, there would have been a a, a, a half hour. There was lots of montage of. TV there was yeah. lots lots of n- of nudity. I was surprised in this movie. There, there was a bit of nudity. Well, yeah. for, there only was, Terry Gar. Only Terry There Gar. was also in the in the the post part of after. Uh, well, she's jumping ahead a little bit. That's okay. So they have their respective sex, right? And then Frederick Forrest, right away in the morning, is having regrets. Of course, he's like, "Oh my God, what did I do? I he had goes sex home with this woman." Second, woman. he opens his eyes. The second, he opens his eyes. Like, I, 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 I gotta I've go been back there. to my. I you know, go when you wake up in a car in a graveyard, and, <laughs> and so, I'm usually pretty happy when I wake yeah. up in the car in so a graveyard. Calls, and so sex. he calls his friend, and he's gonna go with Mo or something, yeah. and, and you know, find they, her. So they they break. He breaks into he breaks uh, his into friend uh, Terry's friend's apartment. I can't remember her who, name. Uh, the, the, who is um, the the very small part that she gets to play and makes the most of playing. She was the, great in it, actually. The hairdresser friend is Lainey Kazan, yeah. who is Elia Kazan's daughter. Is it okay? 
Right. But there's a funny scene when 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 they're, they're she's trying to break in and, and and he slams against the door and knocks her back and then she slams yeah. against the door and, and flattens him. Yeah, <laughs> actually, I actually chuckled a bit at that. There was a yeah, small yeah. chuckle. There was a good. There was some yeah. good physical comedy in there. Yeah. There was and, then, some good and so, and so he finds part. out he finds out where she's staying and then yeah. and then it turns into some weird slapstick shit. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, he's we're, we're, climbing we're, up in the thing and, the, and he he, he grabs electrocutes, hold of the, oh, he electrocutes himself and then he like, steps in a bucket and then they and yeah, ha- actually he has a, himself on a neon sign. Yeah, it's like Looney Tunes. That shit My favorite from? moment weird? comes up though in the entire film and it's only split second. He falls through the skylight into the bed yeah. of. And next to the bed of Raul Julia and Terry Gar getting an honor in the morning. Is that Raul Julia throws on a bathrobe and grabs nunchuck. Fascinating. He did over the shoulder thing. So like it looked like he knew he was using them, like how I'm to always, use them. Then Frederick Forrest, very not 2018, picks up his his uh, Terry Gar I'll have a beer, in, please. Her, in her underwear. Yes. And and, 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 and all, carries uh, her downstairs. And, and, and clothes are almost all coming off. All coming off. And right? everyone's laughing. The people I'll, taking pictures. Uh, takes her, gets her in the car. Well, are all those people, people in the parking lot in the morning with all their cameras? Yeah, I don't know. You know, it, but, I, but, I, it wouldn't surprise me if they're all Japanese because it would have just been, oh my god. <laughs> it was, it was weird. And yeah. and then, but then there's the my my other favorite moment with Raul Julia is there. They they flash back to Raul Julia, and he's got the ice bucket. He goes and gets some ice. Yeah. Right, and then he goes in and he puts it on his forehead. So he got a bump. At some point, probably maybe, from the nunchucks. From the nunchucks, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But right. I, I like the way he, like the way he, he walked but back. But he was in. walking back, and he's like packing some heat. He's all, he's all, he's all. What he had a boner? Well, he's always packing heat. He was just packing some heat. He just had like either either he's wearing a jock, or Wait, we're he, had, he had speedos on. A cod piece, that. perhaps. So that so that we're we're kind of winding down. You were winding down. Then, then, so, then, then then what happens? Then he goes. Well, he's, I remember he's he's driving down the street, and Terry there's naked. Yeah, in the car. she's like not putting on her dress. She doesn't care whatever. anymore. She doesn't care topless. anymore. She's yeah. like, yeah, fuck well, it. I'm well, in Vegas. I'm down. topless. Who cares? Yeah. yeah. Cell phones haven't even really been invented yet. Well, not at all. It's no big deal. So he, she's and she people hoot at her and she yells at them. Says, you know, yeah, I don't. Be honest, I don't have anything in my notes from then until they get to the airport. When uh, I, I, oh, I kind of yeah, yeah. I kind of forgot what they happened. Have another fight. Yeah, they just go home, have another fight. She, why? Why, why do they even want to be together? And then and then she I goes no off. Idea. She oh. goes off to to like, you know, she packs up some more clothes, goes off to Raul Julia, and, and they're on you know, their, uh, Goes off. Then they go to the airport, and that, which the, they built in the fucking. Studio. They built. They built the whole front of the airport. Actually, they had. They what had about the, that airplane that took off? And they, yeah, they, they built that airplane. They actually did. they 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 actually had. No, it's not. It's stock footage from airplane. Yeah, they, they, they actually they actually had I think it was like a third or two thirds of an actual airplane one that had crashed actually that they used they used the front part of or when when and they the, have the scene where they're the scene, they're, yeah, they're, when they're, they're pulling going, away yeah. that's a great sad scene when they're like, after the whole thing's over this terrible thing where he's trying to get her back and everybody's like oh give up man when he comes down, he, and, and he's, he's embarrassed himself he's oh, embarrassed get him, himself. Get a passport. and he and he, yeah. and he, yeah. and he sings the where terrible song I, I actually had that I had a really good Tom Waits song the best Tom Waits song in the whole movie is when he's going through the airport because it's weird and kind of Tom Waits creepy you yeah, know yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's through the airport it's singing. a stylized <laughs> fantasy it's a stylized fantasy but it's such a film is done because imagine you wouldn't even get three feet trying to run like that. Through oh yeah, the through the well, airport. you'd yeah. be tasered. Well, the, that yeah, after nine eleven, now you can't do anything like that. But before nine eleven, you could, you could. I ran through airports all the time. I smuggled a lizard back from <laughs> Mexico I on an airplane. I chased you once. You did. I chased you once. I was like, yeah. And you, you were know, naked I and was. had a knife. It was <laughs> really weird because I'd seen this film and I was paying homage to Terry Garb. <laughs> I used to just jog in the airport. Yeah, <laughs> every morning. You would you would drive out to the airport and jog. I just jog through security on the airplanes. Yeah, hey, uh, how's it going, everyone? I like, I like. Uh, he drives home in the rain. It's, it's Vegas. It's raining in Vegas. Yeah, I don't well, think it's ever raining. It was always the whole film. It just rained, right? Yeah, because there's it's always got that because, slick look. Well, because because they want to have the the neon shadows in the in the rainwater. Right. That's really that was just Francis wanted to have that, so that's what they had. And, well, and it, it, so it always had just rain, and then it, at the end. It rains, and you know, slightly <laughs> metaphorical. I, I, I love, I love when he pulls up in his convertible, yeah. and he parks where you can't even park. He you runs over park, some guy's luggage, yeah. and they can't get, you can't even get out of his car because he's parked where he shouldn't park the car, and he gets a, he gets an argument with the guy. I, I, yeah. In this, and as he's driving up to his house that he yeah. bought with both their money, yeah, and didn't tell her, and didn't tell her. How much the money do they have? He can buy a house. house. To buy a house, and she doesn't even know. Well, he bought a friend. It was like bought 
a part of the house from somebody. Mm. And that's never explained. No, it's not. How, how a third party, other than them two, they must well, have owned they, part they, of the they, house? They, 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 well, the, house. they obviously didn't have a lot of money because the only furniture in the house was basically like a car seat, which yeah. was in the middle of the living room. And they slept on like a, it was like a mattress on the floor kind of thing. Yeah, but they had, they had a nice convertible car. And money nice, for Bora, but... and Bora Bora money. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think well, she I, got a discount though working at the travel. And I, th- I think, oh. I think, I think they were sort of like saving up on their own. I'm, yeah. I'm taking it because he went and bought the rest of the house. Well, I guess with both their money. Yeah. Although if she bought, if she bought with both their money, they she probably, probably a, couldn't I buy the tickets. I think they had a joint account, and so she bought the tickets, but she got a good deal on them because she works there. Right. So, and but, this but, is 1982, so that's not that much. It's not as much as a house. No. To go to, even though it's Bora Bora's far. Yeah. It's not as much as a house, it especially exist. if you're getting the the like say the the discount that you get as a travel agent or something. I don't know what that is, but yeah, but I'm sure they do pretty it's good. Probably significant. This guy does not know how to communicate. I think that's what I'm getting from this movie. The point of it is that yeah, neither of them are very good at the whole communication. Because even the dinner thing, she comes down all dolled up. Now yeah. you're in a relationship. It's your anniversary. Your lover comes downstairs looking great, and he's yeah. in his tidy whitey. He's like, I was gonna make, I was gonna make some microwave chicken. <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> did, did, did you see the size of their? their were they eating their dinner? They, looked like they had a whole chicken each. They look, it, was like, it was like it was like it was like, it was like totally like masticated all over well, their plates. And like, they what the fuck like are they eating? And then he comes out. He, he comes out chewing the as she's leaving. He's chewing. <laughs> she's still eating a turkey leg. He's like fucking. Well, it's like like Fred, Fred Flintstone. Flint Flintstone with like yeah. a brontosaurus rib. At the end, when he when he goes to the airport to get her, he's still eating the chicken. He's, well, he's got a <laughs> plate. Was a big chicken. And he brings it into the he convertible it, he with it, him. He drives and, and as, before he puts it in gear, he like. Has a spoonful he of takes something. A, he takes about whatever that slop yeah. was he's yeah. eating. And then when he when he gets back, he picks the plate up out of the car, and brings it back. Into how the amazing would have been if throughout the entire movie, with his big long takes, yeah. he would say he's just eating, like, <laughs> he's eating cereal with, yeah. with, 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 yeah. he's, while he's boning yeah. the fucking circus woman. Candy floss. Like, <laughs> he's having an argument with Harry Dean Stanton, and he's, he's, he's got, like popcorn, yeah. 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 or sushi, or, or, a, or candy apple. That's or, like the know. Mad Magazine uh, parody of this movie. Yeah, he's just always eating yeah Yeah. (laughs) home from the heart or something that's pretty good chicken from the heart (laughs) chicken from the heart something that's what he's doing. So, so anyways, uh, he he tries to woo uh, Terry Gar back off the plane. She's going to go to Bora Bora. Oh, it was so there's awful. No copyright on that or something. You know what? And, and mercifully, she. Well, it seems like she's going to go right past. It was the busiest you know? airport I think I've ever seen oh, too. Oh, super busy! And, and then everyone's like, there's like hundreds of people trying to get on like a small plane, and everyone's yeah. like looking at him like he's totally insane. And yeah, like, it's like when yeah. the Americans left the American embassy in Vietnam, level chaos. It was totally yeah, like exactly. Like the, there's like the people killer hanging out. There's people hanging on the plane as it was taking off. And, and he even he's such a son of a bitch. He's like, oh, that, that, that wing looks a bit wonky. Yeah. Or oh, everyone like, can hear you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he tries to sing to her. So at this point, he's like wasted his Bora Bora money because mm-hmm. he doesn't have a fucking passport. No. So he gets back in his car like a loser. He drives home in the rain. Did you need a passport in 1982? Probably. I For guess Bora I Bora? For Bora Bora, probably. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, don't go with sexy ass Raul Julia who like sings yeah. to you and treats you really well. Got yeah. Come home and eat chicken. <laughs> chicken, yeah. It's a microwave chicken. <laughs> I, pro- I promise you I'll argue with you tomorrow morning. Yeah. One of my gross, <laughs> my <laughs> gross tidy whiteies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, I didn't need to see. I don't need to see that again. She was way out of his league. Way out of his league. Men's underwear was kind of sad back then. It was. It was pretty sad. It's much better now. It is. Yeah. There's a, there's a far better variety. I've got great underwear. I love I love good underwear. I'm I, actually wearing black dog underwear. Oh really? Right nice. now. I have awesome. black dog underwear. We all do. It's too small though. Yeah, it's a little tight on me too. Mm. Anyway, like I, bought, I bought a size that was a decent fit. <laughs> I, I got the I got the store. I can coffee. still fit into a medium. I had the very. I never could. I couldn't fit into a medium when I was a baby. <laughs> Extra large baby size. Yeah. Is this the red XB? The red black dog underwear. Uh yeah. 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 So why is the dog on the butt? It's on the butt. No, it's, it's, on, it's on the, on the thigh. thigh. It's on the. the and the and the. I lady, thought it was. I thought it was over the, the butt. ladies' underwear. No. It's it's um. It's right in the uh, right in the right in the area. Oh, have yeah. I been wearing? You've been wearing the ladies' wearing underwear, but but backwards. <laughs> well, what was the very last pair? That's the. That's we've, what, we've only we've only made them one time. But the, I mean, literally no. the very last so pair. The, on the boxers, wasn't it? Was on the leg, wasn't it? We never made boxers. I thought you had boxers. No, we only had briefs. You said yeah. a, a boxer is a dog. Oh, yeah, we had the we had the the, the women's they're like, ones. They're and not then the, they're not brief. Men's ones weren't briefs. No, they're they're they're, they're the tight boxers. The tight, yeah, boxer whatever. Briefs, boxer yeah. briefs. Yeah. One from the gaunch. 
That's the <laughs> name of this podcast. The dog right on the crotch for those. No, no, it's on the leg. I don't. I didn't leg. design them. My friend uh, Tina designed so them. So we, we are so disinterested in the them. story of this movie that we're, <laughs> we're, we're talking about, about, talking about fucking, underwear. And that's underwear. underwear. Black dog brand underwear. <laughs> that we made years ago. <laughs> that hasn't sold here for years. Mm. But now everybody's um, going to so want So they get back it. to the I house, the and he's crying, and there's this really nice bit where he's in the yeah. dark, and then the lights all come on, and she comes in, and they start kissing. and uh, She says, I made a big mistake. And I'm like, you sure did. Uh, you should be fucking Raul Julia yeah. in the washroom of that airplane. But you, you, you knew exactly. Back then, <laughs> you could totally get that. away with that shit. But you, you, knew, you knew exactly how that was going to end. You yeah, knew you she did. was going to yeah. come back, and it was no surprise. It wasn't. And, it would and be better if she did It would have been a surprise if she had gone off with Raul Julia and just left him crying at the end. I would have. Everybody would have left the later. movie going, fuck. It was awesome. <laughs> well, it, it, well, Tom Waits would have written it that way. Yeah. yeah. Tom Waits would and never have a happy but, but ending. You, you'd nope. never have had a Hollywood movie like that. And and I don't think Coppola wanted to make a movie without a happy ending. Well, because he was hearkening back to the olden the days. Old style. Which they don't I have... mean, he shot it in the Academy ratio. Right. It was the ratio that is that Hollywood why gave is, is that why on. it looked like all fucked up on my TV screen? Yeah, they, 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 they like because uh, everyone had it's really supposed f- to be it's supposed to be like like not square but but like like right that. okay because I I, I was watching my friends like a slight rectangle I was watching my mm. friend's giant television yeah. and everyone looked short with giant thighs. Yeah, so, no, that, that that's because right. it was being stretched out or ah, something. Fuck. Well, well, why, it why would it just why would it just ratio. why would it just show up on the TV as it's shot? It's, it should. Well, that means he's got his TV set to do that. Uh, I'm not gonna fuck. I fuck the other ones. I'm not gonna fuck with TVs. No. No. And then it pulls it pulls out, and you see a dog crossing the street, and yeah. then I kind of giggle because I, I realized, like, it reminded me of Three Amigos. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, which I, I love that movie. Is this, right. good, is this gonna be your pairing? I love. It should be, but it isn't. Uh, no, I was just like, oh, filmed on the same set as Three Amigos. And then it, it, just when I was thinking that, it, it, then the very f- final shot is this whole thing was filmed on a soundstage. Aren't you surprised? But, but, so did, did, did you notice like uh, when the dog walkers, there's a, a guy living in a trailer right on the corner? Yeah. Who walks out and he's like doing stuff. Saying, yeah. Where the that, fuck did that come from? That was that's weird. me. Was that you? Yeah. It didn't look like you. Why do you need to live in a trailer if you're already living on a soundstage? And it's like this fucking. He wasn't. He wasn't it's like the Truman enough. Show. Like that's how big this fucking stage must have been. I, I, it was a the, the Zotrope was a big studio. Yeah. Well, and, and, was, they, you they, can they, drive cars for, around. For, and, yeah. For, and, and like for this movie, they used all of the lot. These the entire yeah. lot. They used every stu- every sound stage. Money well to, spent. Yeah. Well, yeah. The original budget for this movie was two million bucks. And it ended up costing him over twenty five million dollars, which was a lot of money in nineteen eighty one. Yeah, and he ended up he he put his he put his house his his yeah. house up uh, as collateral. And now he lives Luckily in that not the vineyard. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, and it's it's, it's funny all, all those all the all those movies um, that we talked about earlier that he did, uh, Jack and yeah. Outsiders, Rumblefish, uh, Dracula, uh, Peggy Sue got married. He did all of those movies to pay off his debts. Yeah, which holy is, shit! Yeah, he did. He, it took it took him seven movies to pay off all of his debts. Just not from just this You're movie. Forgetting, yeah, by the way, just the, from this movie. The, just from the yeah. Yeah, that and also the Outsiders bombed as well. Yeah, well, which is also not do well. Yeah, yeah. I don't think any of those films really did particularly Rumble well. Rumblefish, by the way, is a fantastic. Yeah, movie. it's a cool, cool film. The other one I was thinking was Inherent Vice. Actually, would be an interesting really, pairing eh? because yeah. it's it's similarly perplexing, but also you don't Listen really to ask movie, too many I, questions. I really, really like the lot. Right, I want to watch that again because I didn't like, yeah. I, I love P.T. Anderson. I think it's a, and it's I a second watch movie. Yeah, I think, I think, I think so too. Vice. Inherent Vice. I think you got to watch it again to like... Because okay. like in terms of tone, I find them both like at a certain point, usually about 10 minutes in, you have to go, oh, the story doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. And they're, they, they both are sort of desert and, kind you know, of you know what You know what was... R- P.T. Anderson movie that was way better than it should have been. The Master. Nope. No. Um, the Master was great. Yeah. No. No. It wasn't way better than it should have been. It was uh, like a good movie. You know, whatever. Was the movies. new one, Phantom Thread? I haven't seen that yet. You know what? Like, it looks so boring. I know, but I, 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 but I, it's not. It's creepy it. as fuck. I really. I, I'm going to watch it this really weekend. Really creepy. The score is awesome. Greenwood is great, and yeah. it just has this creepy tone through it. You're like, you're constantly thinking someone in this house is going to become a serial killer, but they don't. Like someone in this room, like right it's just, now. It's just creepy and and weird, 
and people do things that make sense for their characters. But yeah. in no real spoilers. Life, you no spoilers. But, I, but I heard Jar Jar Binks ruins the whole thing. Well, yeah, the, <laughs> he ruins he, everything. He's kind of just my kid's birthday into party. the plot like, as a love triangle between Daniel Day Lewis <laughs> and, and, Jar 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 Binks. and Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> <laughs> the worst part though is when they go to take a shower and Kevin Spacey's there, That's or Christopher <laughs> Plummer and Chewbacca. <laughs> if anyone here has seen the new Solo movie, that that's a good joke. Anyways, I haven't seen. I forgot Inherent, that existed. Inherent vice. No fucking Xanadu. I just can't decide. Flip a coin. Xanadu, doesn't matter. I think Xanadu. I think Xanadu would, would be a good pairing with. Uh, that's like what I haven't Xanadu. seen since it came out. I've never seen it. It's just that's just it's just dumb and great and. I remember it being dumb. The <laughs> pubs are still open, so we're gonna we're gonna wrap this bad boy up. The yeah. movie was uh, one from the heart. Josie, fine pick. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. For, yeah, thanks for I, joining us I shouldn't us be saying again. thank, thank you, you for joining us because I don't work here anymore. No, but you're part. No, you're part you're, of the you're crew. You're the podcast person. Right? Yeah, we're, so we're, like, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You don't have to work here to be on the podcast. No, but it's right. I'll be slaving away editing this. Show. Yeah, and what? saying sort of. <laughs> Why are we still talking? <laughs> uh, let's wrap this up. Good night, everybody. Uh, this is the Black Light After Dark. We are located at 1470 Commercial Drive in and, Vancouver. And 3451 Camby Street. Yeah, there's a website. There's a phone. There's yeah. a, we have a phone. We have phones at each store. <laughs> yeah. You can call us and then correct us on our mistakes that we made about who, who directed this and who yeah. directed that and who was the cinematographer on this. And Dump on me for saying Ted Demi directed... Well, we know it was a joke. Married to the Mob, and I meant it as a joke. I know, it was yeah, a joke. Yeah. We, we clarified that. Because we, we all know. know, in fact, Demi Moore directed that film. <laughs> right. So there you go. What was Demi Moore done like? Oh, Wait a minute. Was it, was I, it, I had a friend who used to call her Semi wasn't, Moore. Wasn't Demi Moore and Arthur? No, that was Dudley Moore. Oh. Yes. And or Jude That would Law. be a really different movie. And John John Gilgood. <laughs> Sir, Sir John Gilgood. But if if it was it was if it was um Dudley Moore and Demi Moore was the butler. Yeah. Yeah, so this is Sir, Sir John Gilgood's part. More, and more. Part. more no. and more and yeah. we can digitally put him in now. Yeah. We can totally do that. I suppose. Yeah, well we could digitally put in Christopher Plummer over Liza Minnelli. Yeah, or every Kevin's basic. In what? In what? Imagine like if Cabaret? Christopher Plummer was in Seven. In Arthur. Christopher Plummer is, right. is the, the voice of the evil cricket in uh, A Bug's Life. <laughs> anyway. Actually, that'd be good. Kevin Spacey Christopher is one of Plummer. our best subscribers. Hey, you walk up, you open the shower, Christopher Plummer's there. American Beauty. He's oh, okay. wanking it in the opening scene. Oh. Wanking it. He's just wanking it. Sure is. <laughs> That's one of the few. Yes. You look happy to see Wanking in the shower is a terrible if idea. Just waste so much now, water. This will go on forever. The Black Dog After Dark podcast is recorded at Black Dog Video on Commercial Drive in Vancouver, Canada. It's presented by Alex Chisholm, Darren Gay, and Dylan Reimer. It is produced by Dylan Reimer and Darren Gay. Alex just kind of stands there and drinks beer. The intro and outro music was recorded by Tiger Burning Bright, composed by Jeff, who works at Jefferson's Barbershop, also on Commercial Drive. And he's a damn good hairstylist. <laughs>